Hey guys, this is Chase with csjoseph.life doing another episode for season 17. This is season 17, episode 8. Uh, who are the Gamma Quadra, also known as the Wayfarers? This is the STJ, or excuse me, the SFP NTJ Quadra. Now remember, as we're talking about quadras, uh, we're kind of borrowing a little bit from the socionics uh, theory of quadras. Although my definition of quadras is not exactly the same as socionics, but I do maintain that uh, you know understanding of quadras is absolutely necessary, especially as we're trying to learn about uh, how to uh, type ourselves, et cetera, and uh, kind of uh, type other people and uh, just generally understand, uh, especially when you're talking in terms of compatibility. When it comes from a, a compatibility approach, be it social compatibility, romantic compatibility, professional compatibility, uh, parental compatibility, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But like from relationships, uh, as far as we know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely uh, necessary um, to that end uh, to keep track of you know, people's different quadras. And the reason why is, is because a person's quadra uh, it kind of manifests, you know, like right, right as someone is b born, you know, when they're within their quadra, and then as they develop, they they end up picking one of the two sides that they're associated with within their quadra as they get older. Although there's two uh, competing theories about developing one's quadra, and we're two episodes away from talking about that. We'll be talking about that immediately after the delta quadra. But uh, the gamma quadra is 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 a bit different. And uh, while, you know, it's easy for me to lecture on the Crusader Quadra because, like, I am a Crusader type because I'm an NTP, or it's easy for me to lecture on the, uh, the, the Templar Quadra, also known as the Beta Quadra, because, like, I'm married to a Templar, I've been trained and raised by Templar types. The Wayfire, the Wayfarer Quadra, which is the uh, S, um, or the, uh, the NTJ SFP Quadra, has definitely been something that I've had to spend a little bit more time on in preparing this particular lecture from a season, uh, you know, 17 point of view, because uh, they're actually very misunderstood. And, uh, you know, that can be a, a problem in a lot of ways. So... Uh, it's important to make sure that uh, we have this general understanding as to how this quadra works. Because like I said, romantic uh, compatibility, for example, sometimes you might have a golden quadra or a silver quadra. If you're a crusader type, your golden quadra is, uh, uh, you know, basically something that uh, you'd want to have a relationship with. But then you'd also want to know what your silver quadra is so that you can have relationships with your silver quadra. For example, what's the best relationship that you could have from your silver quadra, right? So what is a silver quadra? A silver quadra is like uh, the quadra that you would have, the, the four types that you'd have the second highest potential compatibility with if we're like really zooming out here and looking at the forest and whatnot. And the highest uh, relationship that you would be able to have, the best relationship you'd be able to have from your silver quadra would basically be the pedagogue relationship, right? So if like you're an ENTJ, that would mean an INFP, for example. If you're an ESTP, that'd be an ISFJ or ENTP, INFJ, uh, ENFP, INTJ approach, right? Uh, so uh, it's where you have the, uh, we have highest sexual compatibility, but you don't have very high emotional compatibility, right? And it's stuff like that that you kind of have to be aware of, you know, that works. Although we do have one pedagogue uh, relationship video out right now at season 14, episode nine. It's available for Patreon uh, Silver members. Uh, you can do that at csjoseph.life forward slash Patreon to find out more in case you want to like a little understand at least one of the uh, pedagogue relationships. But be that as it may. Uh, it is uh, necessary, and, and by the way, also at the very end of this lecture, I'm going to be doing a Q&A session and also asking uh, people who are on this little webinar uh, some questions in the Q&A session. I have a kind of like a, a potential poll that I'd like to ask uh, everyone joining us tonight in terms of like which uh, relationship pairing they would like to see uh, for the next season 14 episode, so episode 10, so we're going to be talking about it at the end of this, so stay tuned uh, all the way to the end so that you can get... Uh, your uh, your voice heard in on that but anyway so understanding quadras again it's just really necessary to understand because the quadras themselves all the there's four types per quadra and they all share the same cognitive function so if we're going to look like for example at you know my whiteboard right here so 
And you can see like for ESFP, ISFP, ENTJ, INTJ, they all have the same cognitive functions. They're all extroverted sensors. They're all NI users. They're all FI users. They're all TE users. They all have the same cognitive functions. And this can cause, you know, a lot of incompatibility because they all like to uh, compete with each other in certain situations. But conversely, due to the high camaraderie that they have, they can also use this as something that they can utilize to learn from each other, which is absolutely necessary. However, there are a lot of commonalities uh, between uh, these four types that they are, you know, sharing the same quadra. And some of those commonalities are, you know, hey, they're all pragmatic. Have you ever noticed that? It's kind of like the Crusaders. The Crusaders, while they're half pragmatic, pragmatic and half affiliative, they're actually, all of them are informative. But the Wayfarer types, they're all pragmatic. They're all focused on doing what works. They're all focused on being independent and having uh, you know, a sense of uh, personal freedom, et cetera. So just make yourself aware of that Like uh, when it comes to Wayfarers. They're all about freedom. They're all about their personal freedom. They're all about their choice. Taking away their choice is horrible. But in the same way that they're all about their choice and their own freedom, they're also about their personal performance and some capability. ESFPs hailed as the performance type, all about performing, et cetera, and putting on a show. INTJ is all about getting over their performance anxiety and outperforming everyone. And uh, ENTJ is unlocking the secrets to performing really well, whatever, form, whatever uh, aspect of art form that is. Where the ISFPs, while they are very artistic themselves, you know, naturally, they're trying to utilize their art to create the master system, but it's all from the standpoint of performance. So like the Gamma Quadra is known as the performance or performing quadra. It's what they do, right? But they're not necessarily performing for others in as much as that they are also performing for themselves. What, why, what's the point of performing, right? Because the thing is, is that the Gamma Quadra, from the Gamma Quadra's point of view, especially in terms of relationships, they for some reason believe, and obviously at times this can actually be a lie that they tell themselves, but they believe, they believe that hey, you know, if I perform really well for other people, that means people are not going to abandon me. That means people are always going to be loyal to me every single time, as long as I keep up my performance. And then I'm like, okay, if that's true, uh, Wayfarers, so how the hell do you even live your life? What's going to happen like when your performance goes down and you're old and crunchy and elderly? And you're not able to perform so well anymore, especially in the bedroom, for example. Are you just going to be okay that people abandon you? Uh, I mean, like, do you even have any substance there? Think about that. Are you, are you honestly okay with people just abandoning you after all of that, right? See, that's the thing. Like, it's like you just don't have any faith in the human race whatsoever. You have faith in yourselves or you have this self-belief over your own ability to perform. But in terms of people being loyal to, to you, regardless of how you perform, apparently, you know, for the large part, Gamma Quadra folks don't even actually believe that that's true, or even could even possibly consider that that's true. Wow, that's a really horrible and stressful way to live life. Apparently, like, you must live around, like, horrible people in your life who are just there to take advantage of you consistently. I mean, the SFPs would be aware of this, right? Because at least they're interest-based and they know what they're getting out of a situation. But what about you systematic NTJs out there who just is like, oh, it's all about, you know, what I have to offer someone. And, you know, I'm just here to like be the ultimate catch, you know? Well, what happens when you stop being the ultimate catch? Hmm? What's your contingency plan, little wayfarers? Hmm, I wonder, do you have a contingency plan? Have you thought about that? Because you're basically automatically assuming that, you know, people like me out there, all of a sudden, like my super high opinion of you is just going to change on a whim. The moment you stop performing, it's like, oh, you know, like I'm in a relationship with this NTJ. She's really good in bed. You know, she's, she's really cute. She's got a super tight body, but oh, oh, she's getting fat. Oh, no, she's not really performing well in the bedroom. Oh, no. Oh, guess what? That means I have to like, you know, throw in the dumpster. Wow, I must be like a total heartless asshole. Wait a minute, Gamma Quadra, are you guys walking around everywhere assuming that everyone's a heartless asshole? Is that really how it is? Do you really think everyone else in the world is so shallow? 
wait a minute. Maybe it's because you're shallow. Stop. See, it just comes out in your behavior. The gamma quadrant is the most shallow of all the types. NTJs, SFPs, all about that shallowness, right? Super, super shallow. Like, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Show me how you're not shallow, right? Because your shallowness is proof based on, well, if I perform really well and it's all about what I have to offer and be the ultimate catch, then you assume that that's what buys you loyalty, right? You know, because you think everything's some kind of transaction, some kind of relationship transaction of some kind. Ooh, yeah, that's effective. Why? Well, it's pretty easy. Let's look at why. Think about it. Crusader types focused on justice, right? And fairness. Crusader types, you know, keep it to the shadows like the rogue, right? All about, uh, you know, uh, Bruce Lee, he was a crusader type. He's an ENTP, right? Hitler was a crusader type, hmm? right? We have all these crusader types all about fairness, but they can be pretty sneaky, those crusaders. They can be real sneaky, right? You know, and, and that sneakiness definitely happens. Of course it does. It absolutely happens, that sneakiness. Why does it happen? Well, you know, because they, they you know, sometimes if you were to challenge a, a crusader in single combat, fight or flight, right, they're going to fly away so that they come back in the shadows and they nail you when you don't see it coming and they land a death blow, right? You know, kind of like rogues in uh, World of Warcraft. They just ambush you. Kind of an honorless way of doing it, right? So they're like ninjas. Crusaders like ninjas. But Gamma Quadra, you know, their golden quadra, the wayfarers, they're like pirates. You know, take what you can and give nothing back. It's because they're shallow. You people are shallow. I'm tired of you people being shallow. You know, there's a reason I married a Templar. It's because I'm tired of shallow. And like, she's real and she's amazing and she's respectful and someone who I have a high opinion of. And guess what? My high opinion of her is not going to change. It's so funny because the Gamma Quadra, one of their top seductive styles, especially in a relationship standpoint, is the Siren. Railgun's seductive style is the Rake. I love how rakish she is. It's amazing. And you know, and I'm a coquette because hashtag Crusader types are all about being coquettes and Templar types are all about being rakes, right? So it works out, you know, the rake is great for a coquette. It works out perfectly, right? But you know, sirens, it's like, well, you know, eventually, you know, the, I may be like Cleopatra according to Robert Greene in 48 Laws of Power, but as soon as my beauty fades, you know, it's not as much, so I better control the situation. I better make sure that, you know, I have them dependent on me. How many times have I seen ENTJ women getting into relationships with NTP men or NP men who are all stuck in their comfort zone, who don't have jobs, who don't, who live in their mother's basements, or, and then they end up moving in together and they still don't have jobs. And the ENTJ woman is like, you know, well, at least he's dependent on me. He's not going anywhere. And then I have to deal with my fear of abandonment because one day I'm gonna not be able to perform for him, but he's already dependent on me and they don't have to worry about it anymore. Wow, that's appropriate. That's like, uh, okay, thank you. So what's the point? So when you're talking about performance, another way to look at performance in terms of the Wayfarers is achievement. They're all about achievement. Of course, the ISFPs scared the most about achievement. You know, they're pretty scared about that. But even they understand that dynamics can change, right? They say dynamics can change because they're so shallow themselves that because they're willing to think that their own personal dynamics can change and because dynamics can change for them, just because their opinion can change on a whim doesn't mean everyone else's opinion changes on a whim, but they automatically assume and project that onto other people. It's really annoying. Stop jumping to conclusions about other people's behavior. I at least can say that ESFPs do that the least, which is funny because ESFPs out of these four types within this quadra 
have the uh, uh, reputation of sleeping around the most when that's not actually the case. They just have the reputation of it, probably because all those any heroes out there who are trying to like compete with them end up spreading rumors about them that are not actually true. And then they have to combat the rumors and they get scared of the rumors. Then they just remove themselves out of the situation. And because they've removed themselves of the situation, the popular opinion about those ESFPs is that, oh, well, they obviously left. So it had to have been true because they're ashamed. No. It's one of the reasons why ESFPs have such a hard time testifying in court that they were raped. And they were actually raped, but they don't want to do that because they don't want their accuser to deal reputation hits to them. Because fifth law of power, according to Robert Greene, and I quote, so much depends on reputation, guard it with your life. And this is what ESFPs do, especially the ESFP women who've been raped and have the ability to testify in court, but they choose not to because they're scared. They don't like being labeled by the person who raped them, publicly labeled as a whore. So you can kind of like understand where they're coming from. All about that performance and achievement, but then, hey, I got to guard my reputation because, you know, oh, well... I'm not so beautiful anymore, or oh, you know, I got fat anymore, I got fat, or oh, I'm old now, or oh, I can't have children anymore, I'm not able to perform as much anymore, so all I have left is my status, all I have left is my reputation. Wow. And then because of that, they allow injustices like a rapist to get away, you see? because that's all they have left. Although truth be told, I'm sure most of these types, these SFPs, these Wayfarers, these NTJs, they often uh, don't have a choice but to be so shallow, right? And it's just how their minds work, but then they can rise above that shallowness. They have that capability, right? But will they? Take what you can, give nothing back, right? The pirate way, because Let's be honest, wayfarers are pirates. Think about it. Think about what, what pirates do. What do pirates do? They get on their ship. Their ships represent absolute total freedom. There's nothing like having the ability to go anywhere you want. Which of the types have the travel bug? Which types want to travel the most? It's the wayfarers. And trust me, if you're talking to a wayfarer who's like not really into travel, <laughs> they're lying. Don't believe them. I don't care if they're SE inferior and they're an INTJ and they're like, oh, I'm not really sure about traveling. Okay, yeah, 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 BS. They will, especially if you're like, okay, hey, I'm going over here. You want to come with me? Like, okay, yeah, because I know you're going. Because they would rather have that shared experience. It takes their fear away, right? But Wayfarers, they go their own way. You ever hear about that men's movement called MGTOW, men going their own way? That was literally invented by NTJs. Think about that. So wayfarers are people going their own way. They are pirates in search of freedom and in search of treasure. And while they are focused on getting theirs, because, you know, that's how it goes. How many times have I seen this quadra be the other woman or the other man in relationships trying to, like, take someone else's uh, treasure? They're like highwaymen or claim jumpers, right? You know, like the ESFP, that duelist, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm going to duel you. You know, kind of like that ESFP duelist in that Thor movie. You know, the guy with the blonde hair with the little sword, you know, his cutlass, you know, around. He's an ESFP. There's a reason for that. He is the duelist, right? And they duel in terms of trying to find the truth, but they're also dueling and competing for treasure. Because from their point of view, if I can outperform the rest, that means I get the glory I get the treasure, I get the everything, right? It's when, you know, the difference between wayfarers is that while they are trailblazing new paths forward, it's whether or not they allow people to follow them, it's whether or not they allow people to go in that same direction and to be able to, you know, get treasure with them, right? It's so hard, so hard, especially when you're raising a Wayfair child. It's so hard to get them to share. These are the four types that have a hard time sharing because 
hey, this is mine. That's my man or that's my woman. It's mine. I own that. You know, it's always interesting how NTJs and SFPs are all about having ownership, right? It's kind of weird because it's like, they're like, Mm, no one can own me. You know, I'm not going to be tied down to a ball and chain, but I definitely own them. Hypocrites. Absolute hypocrites. You, you, always, you always expect, you know, everyone else to be okay with how, you know, you know, ooh, you know, I got to read your phone and make sure you're not talking to someone or, or, ooh, I got to make sure you're not following this person on social media or, ooh, I always got to know what you're doing at all times. Because, you know, I, I might be threatened and my reputation, like, what would my girlfriends think if, if uh, you know, if they find out that you're talking to other people, even though, even though you're like not doing anything wrong, but you're talking to other people, they, they might perceive that you might be cheating on me and then and that my relationship with you is not as strong as, as, as it really is. And they're seeing it that way and they're seeing an opportunity to get with you. What if that's happening? Wow. Gotta love that NTJ paranoia cone in there, and yet SFPs, you know, have that same point of view oftentimes. It's because they're afraid of being abandoned. These people don't want to be left behind. These people don't want to be left out, but they also want to have the freedom to be able to find their treasure and own their treasure, but they don't want to be owned themselves. It's so weird, and it's so backwards. It's so annoying, right? They're selfish right? The level of achievement that each of these types can, can achieve is great, but when it comes to that treasure, they expect that that is their treasure. Take what you can and give nothing back. And it's funny because they're willing to take other people's treasure. I have coached so many people in this quadra uh, over the last year. And, you know, I, I coach people who, uh, who have been victims uh, of cheating or are people who actually do cheat. And, and I would say over half, probably about 60% of those situations is as a result of a wayfarer type getting in the situation and creating a cheating situation. A, where, a wayfarer is almost always involved. The wayfarer themselves are either being the cheater or they're the other man or the other woman in the situation. It is consistent. And it's because, hey, I just got to get my treasure. I'm all about my treasure, my treasure, right? You know, because it's about achievement. It's all about the glory because, hey, you know, if I can get with that person, you know, that's going to increase my status. And I just want to be able to prove and to show everybody else that I'm good enough that I can actually pull off getting with that person, even though I don't actually care about them. Cleopatra was that way. That's how she behaved with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, according to uh, Robert Greene in The 48 Laws of Power or The Art of Seduction, when he talks about the siren. Gamma Quadra are sirens. That's their main seductive style. It's all about, hey, look at me. Hey, uh, I'm performing really well. Hey, look at all these achievements that I have, right? I was actually coaching a, an ESFP recently uh, who was uh, asking me for advice on how to uh, set up their Tinder profile. And I'm like, oh, here we go. But, you know, for some reason, you know, everyone thinks that Tinder is, you know, pretty cool. But uh, within their culture, you know, Tinder is not exactly, uh, you know, something that's all about, you know, just, you know, getting, you know, straight up getting laid. But uh, while in other cultures it is. But in their culture, not so much. We're putting together, you know, their, um, um, you know, their their profile, and they just keep listing all these achievements, all these achievements, over and over and over. And they're trying to find their treasure, and they think that their treasure is going to come from them because of all these achievements they got listed out. And I'm like, all right, listen, you do realize how intimidating that is, right? Why is anyone going to be comfortable, right? Why is anyone going to be loyal to somebody? who constantly keeps achieving because then they themselves are going to be like, well, wait a minute. What if I'm an achievement? What if I'm a new pair of shoes for this person? What if I'm a new car for this person, right? What if they just want a bank account? Uh, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. Wayfarers are the gold diggers of the types. 
oh yeah because hashtag gotta get me my treasure take what you can give nothing back you know what i'm saying folks like seriously this is what happens wayfarers you know hey man i've been going out pretty solo but hey i'm a self-made man i got mine you know and i and i did this and i did this and here's my trophy wife wow it's as if you expect the rest of the world to be as shallow as you are. Unbelievable. Are you out of your mind? Why? Why? Because if you think about it, logically speaking, if you're going out of your way, okay, to perform and achieve, and then all of a sudden, in exchange for gaining that treasure, gaining that loyalty from somebody, someone who will be loyal to you to a fault and follow you over a cliff. You're trying to go out of your way to become that ultimate catch, right? That you could finally catch that person. I got him. I'm lassoing him. Yeah. Oh, he's mine. He's mine. I own him. He's mine. He's branded. He's mine. And his reputation is attached to mine. And if I go down, he goes down, blah, blah, blah. And I can't let go because I got him lassoed, et cetera, right? And it's as if, the person doing the last of the wing, it's as if the wayfarer themselves, because of how shallow they are, because they're so focused on achieving that they assume that everyone else is like them. Everyone else is trying to achieve in the same way. No wonder INTJs and ENTJs have F F E demon and F E trickster because they don't care about the social norms. They don't care because they assume everyone else is as shallow as they are. And it was even sadder is when NTJs don't even realize how shallow they are. Oh, that's even worse. It's kind of pathetic. And it's so funny to me because they automatically repulse their golden and silver pairs. You think NTPs are remotely interested in shallow NTJs? Absolutely not. Why is that? Because all those achievements, they're really intimidating. Yeah, because... There's no humility there. Remember, humility is the source of beauty. You can give me a woman who's nine, 10, nine out of 10 beauty, Victoria's Secret model, but if she's arrogant, if she's shallow, I will throw her ass in the dumpster straight up. I don't care. That's where she belongs because if she lacks humility entirely, I'm not interested because men don't care that much. I mean, yeah, great. A fine ass, nice pair of tits. That's fantastic. Sure. Okay, great. But the thing is, men already know that's not going to last long. Men already know that, hey, you know, everyone gets old one day. They already know that. So what's going to set this woman apart from everybody else who has a fine ass and pair of tits? Oh yeah, that's right. Humility, the ability to show the man respect, right? Or reverse that in a woman situation to a man, a man's ability to love, you know, what's going to happen, you know, when, uh, is he still going to be a love me when, he, love me when he no longer sees me as his achievement, or if he no longer sees me as his trophy wife, right? Is he still going to love me? Am I still going to be able to put my faith in him? Am I still going to be able to be loyal to him even after all this time? Does he, is he esteemed enough? Is he respectable enough as a man to do that for me, right? Or is he shallow? And has he been shallow this entire time, right? Let me tell you something. Crusader types, when they fall in love with the wayfarers, crusaders are looking for the flaws, folks. They're not looking for the perfections, and yet, these pirates, they, these, these wayfarers, they're going out of their way to, uh, to, to achieve and get all their treasure and, and, and be the best. You know, got to catch them all, right? You know, I, I'm going to be the best Pokemon master out there. And they're focused on that. And being the best and being perfect, who cares? NTPs are not attracted to that. SFJs are not attracted to that. Crusader types are not attracted to that. They are attracted to people who are willing to admit and wear their flaws like a badge, okay? Stop taking your pain for granted. That's a form of being shallow. Don't do it. It's wrong. It's wrong. 
because of, you know, the achievement and the performance and the, you know, the whole shallow thing that's going along with it, it's like, okay, well, you know, haven't you ever noticed when, when people like flatter themselves, their chances are they're a wayfarer. They're always flattering themselves, especially INTJs. It's so annoying. But even ESFPs do it. They flatter themselves. It's like, oh, I'm such an important person. I should be treated like a VIP. Everyone knows me and everyone likes the sound of, of my voice. And, 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 you know, and I, and I perform so well for them. Or, you know, the ISFP, you know, inside their gallery, you know, in their little, little private forest they have, you know, it's like, oh, look at all these amazing creations that I made here in my little private gallery. And, you know, I'm, I have a really big brand, you know, because, you know, to the Wayfair, everything is all about their brands, just like Napoleon, the Marshall, the ENTJ was all about his brand. You know what I'm saying? The Napoleon brand, he got so arrogant that he ended up chasing his enemy down and didn't even realize he was being rope-a-doped. Uh, and then he lost at Waterloo like an idiot. And for some reason, he thought, you know, the Rothschilds of the world would keep lending him money over and over and over again because he's so he fell in love with his own brand. That's what these types do. They have this self-flattery problem. And then they flatter other people because they, they already flatter themselves because they expect everyone else around them to be just as shallow as they are. And they don't even realize it. And yet, I always hear about wayfarers complaining about the quality of their relationships because then they come to me complaining and then I get to be the one person that tells them smiling in the face and be like, your problem is that you're shallow. You're not willing to accept your own flaws. And you have such insanely high standards for relationships, right? The thing is, is that your relationships, that your relationship standard is so high for women or it's so high for men in your life that in order for anyone to possibly be able to meet that standard, you know, that standard that not even you yourself either meet or will be able to meet tomorrow, but in order for them to even get to that point, you are forcing that person to be fake because they themselves cannot even be themselves or even be real to meet your standard in order for them to have a relationship with you. So, and then you get all butt hurt when you find them, when you find out they're being fake. Maybe it's your own damn fault. Maybe. Maybe you're shallow. Maybe it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Maybe it's your own damn fault, not theirs. Maybe listing all of your achievements and leading with your achievements just basically just is, is intimidating and you wonder why. It's funny, you know, statistically out of these four types, which of these four types seem to have the most successful relationships? <laughs> it's, it's the ISFP actually. Even though the ISFP can be insanely manipulated and manipulative because, you know, in the absence of communication or explanation, perceptions become reality and ISFPs are masters of handling perception. Gosh, you know what my favorite things to do to ISFPs is? Is expose them. I love exposing them publicly and just showing people and moving the spotlight right on top of the ISFP to see if they have the strength to withstand it while they're very hypocritical, expecting everyone else around them to be able to perform because it's like, well, if I could perform, you could perform. I'm like, oh, you think that's okay? Spotlight on you. Let's see if you can do it for sure. Because most of the time, you know, ISFPs, as much as the rest of the Wayfarers are all like, hey, fake it until you make it. Wow funny who's the flimsy straw man now oh you know maybe that's what's actually going on but then of course there are the wayfarers who are not that way there are the wayfarers who work really hard there are the wayfarers that go there here's a great example of a wayfarer john ferner new ceo of walmart fantastic fellow he's a wayfarer he's an entj great dude humbled himself do you know what he did when he became ceo he went and toured every single Walmart he used to work at and met the original teams, people that were still there. And he became CEO. He started off as an associate. That's some humility. He's not shallow because he recognized that he wasn't that person who was able to do it all by himself. 
That's the difference between a bad wayfarer and a good wayfarer. A wayfarer who expresses gratitude for the people that help them get to their high level of performance. No one, and I mean no one, actually gets there or achieves anything by themselves. I don't care if you didn't know your father. I don't care if your parents died. I don't care if you think that you did everything by yourself because you didn't. Welcome to the human race. No human being, none of the 16 types are designed or by design capable of doing everything on their own. We are built for relationships and it is by the standard or foundation of relationships in our lives that we, in our lives that we are able to achieve wafers notwithstanding. But apparently, you know, wayfarers forget, they conveniently forget everybody else who has ever actually helped them and they really struggle with showing gratitude. Gosh, isn't it so weird how I claim the ENFP and the IS, INFP are the most selfish of all of the types, yet for some reason, SFPs and NTJs actually forget people that who have helped them, forget people who have been loyal to them this entire time and wonder why they're alone this entire time because for some reason the SFPs and NTJs out there fall in love with their own brands. They forget the people that got them to where they are. Wow, that's so shallow. They deserve to be alone. Listen, if you folks want to like actually have meaningful relationships with people, and work and business, sexually, intimately, parents, whatever. Show some freaking gratitude for once. Actually take the time to write down who has ever actually helped you, call them and, and, and thank them. At least do that. You know, it's funny. I haven't exactly been thanked very often by SFPs and NTJs in my life. It's very rare that I get thanked by them. I get, I get, I get thanked, it's funny, I get thanked more by NFPs than I do NTJs. Pathetic, but it happens. It's really weird. They always seem to conveniently forget that I was the guy that elevated them to where they were, that I was the guy that gave them a shot, that I was the guy that saved their marriage, that I was the guy that introduced them to the love of their life, that I was the guy that helped them find who they were, but they're not very grateful now, are they? You know, that's a problem, right? Show some gratitude. Yes, I get that you're absolutely obsessed with treasure. I get that you're absolutely obsessed with achievement. I get it. I get that you flatter yourselves, but here's the thing, folks. Stop trying to cover up your flaws. Your flaws are what makes you beautiful. Your flaws is what allows a crusader type, your golden quadra, to be loyal to you. Actually, not your top performance. It's your flaws. That's what endears us to you. That's what makes us loyal to you. That's what makes us desire you. That's what makes us not want to abandon you. But, you know, when you assume we're as shallow as we are, wow, how does that make us feel? It makes us feel objectified because you treat us like objects, a new pair of shoes, right? The Wayfair is the type that objectifies people the most. That's really sad, but it's true. Wayfair is also, um, you know, at least, you know, some of them are like, you know, well, truth is subjective. It's all about what you believe. SFPs do that. NTJs can accept that there is a such thing as absolute truth, which is great. Um, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to their moral principles and their beliefs. But sometimes their moral principles in the face of their reputation or in the face of treasure, in the face of achievement, or in the face of personal gain, they're not willing to give it up. 
And the thing is, is that they wonder why they're alone, but they're holding hard, so hard on their treasure. It's slipping through their fingers like sand. They're trying to control it so much, but they cannot let go. They have to be willing to let go. They have to be willing to share. A wayfarer who shares, shares their treasure, shares their journey is someone who gets people who will be loyal to them and never abandon them. That's the key. That's the secret. It's when pirates and ninjas come together, where the pirate's like telling the ninja, hey, you want to be a soldier of fortune? Let's go together on this journey. I'll share the treasure. I know where I'm going. And the wayfarer moves forward and starts blazing that trail, and that ninja follows right behind. That crusader follows them right behind and protects them and guarantees that they can continue to move forward towards the treasure so that they can reach the treasure and share the treasure together. Because what's the point, folks, if you have treasure but do not share it with anybody? What's the point? There is no point. No wonder wayfarers are so lonely. They just can't trust anyone else with their treasure. But ninjas, you know, the crusaders, they're very loyal people. They're very trustworthy. If you give them a chance, if you don't assume that they're as shallow as you are, let go of how shallow you are, folks. Be deep for once. Recognize that if your treasure gets taken away from you, go get more. There's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. The wayfarers are all about where willpower meets achievement. N-I plus T-E. That's how it works. Achievement, treasure, that which means you can always find a path to new treasure. If you lose your treasure, just go get more. Don't use it in an evil way and become the other woman or the other man in a relationship and take someone else's treasure. Go find your own. You should be performing well enough to be able to find your own, right? Or are you too shallow even for that? And you got to take someone else's treasure. Kind of much like how King David did to, uh, what is it? Was it Uriah the Hittite and Bathsheba? He took Bathsheba, you know, uh, Uriah's uh, ENFP wife, you know, and just be like, hey, you know, I, I took her. And, uh, and, then, and then arranged for Uriah to get murdered over the whole thing. And then the prophet Nathan comes before King David and is like, oh, well, you know, uh, you like literally took that one sheep, yet you have a huge flock of sheep. You know, and David's like, I will, you know, bring that man before me. I'll punish him. And then the prophet Nathan's like, you are that man. You did this because he's a murderer. Because he was selfish, because he wasn't willing to share, taking someone else's treasure. Go earn your own. Go earn your own. How many times do I hear about ENTJs? Oh, I'm going to start this company and start at the bottom. Go make your own company. Stop trying to take someone else's company unless they want you to right? You know, or, or the ESFB, always trying to steal the show, always trying to steal attention, be the life of the party, right? Or the ISFP, my art is better than everyone else's. I have a big brand. My name is more valuable than yours. Wow. Or the INTJ, no one can outperform me. No one can, even though I procrastinate and can't actually get anything done, or I can never start anything because I'm too afraid that I might fail. Wow. Hypocrites. Stop it. Stop it. Wayfarers, they live in the moment. They need people who are loyal to them. They also need to have absolute freedom of choice. They need to have the ability to seek treasure and get the riches for themselves in their own life. Here's an example of a wayfarer, Robert Kiyosaki. He talks about how in his youth, he didn't have the opportunity to learn about money because I want to be rich one day. I want to get my treasure. It's what wayfarers are all about, getting their treasure. Well, He realized that society was built in such a way that they didn't help him get treasure and he wanted treasures. So he had to find his rich dad to learn treasure. There's a reason for that. The thing is, folks, what good is it to gain all the treasure in the world and not have anyone to share it with? That's the point. That's the point. So wayfarers, please bring us with you on your journey. Because we all know that once you get your treasure, that's great. Then you realize the people that you bring with you, the people that you share your treasure with, those people are actually your real treasure. 
For it is written, where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, enlightening, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and leave a comment below. Uh, the uh, Q&A session is now going to begin, so I'm going to switch over to the uh, rest of the webinar here and uh, start taking questions uh, from people. And uh, make sure that uh, you wayfarers show gratitude so that you can have your true treasure. Otherwise, you're just going to be shallow and get like literally nothing. But anyway, um, let's... Uh, Let's continue on here. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to allow people uh, to talk here. Um, I think everyone present uh, has that. And uh, awesome. Cool. Uh, uh, go ahead and use the uh, Q&A uh, thing, or you can actually put your questions in the chat. Or if you guys would like to speak up, go ahead and speak up. Uh, Lev, you look like you have an earnest question, so uh, go ahead and give it up for us. Uh, your question, sir. Oh, I uh, didn't really have anything planned. Sorry. I don't know why I'm talking. <laughs> hey, it's all good, man. Anyone else? Any questions regarding this lecture? Let me give it about a couple more seconds here. Uh, maybe no one has any questions. Um, all right. Tony, oh, got a question. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Tanya. You have the floor. You can unmute yourself. Trying to unmute still, or you could just type out your question in the channel. Okay. Well, while uh, she's getting that figured out, um, anyone else have any questions? Uh, Chase, yeah, I have a question now. All right, cool. Okay, hey, how does um, SJ shallowness compare to the gamma quadrant shallow, shallowness? Because I know as an ESTJ myself, when it comes to like people's looks, like yeah, it, I'm pretty bad at that. But like, what's uh, like how does how do SJs compare in terms of like their shallowness to the uh, the wayfarers? Um, their shallowness is not necessarily as achievement focused. It's more of like uh, they just have this belief of things should just be this way because this is the ideal that I'm looking for, especially like from an STJ standpoint because they have NFP um, subconscious. Uh, they're idealists, right? And you combine the idealist subconscious with SE critic or SE nemesis. Uh, that's where that shallowness comes from. It's not necessarily something that's based in achievement per se, right? It's more based on a, like a form of idealism or Thank expectations you. or um, the norm, right? Right. Apparently, uh, Tanya dropped. So speaking about gratitude, uh, thank you for answering that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, gratitude is definitely a component of the Delta Quadra, but we'll be getting to the Delta Quadra for next month. Um, the, uh, the Delta Quadra is a little bit different. I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, we released uh, the symbols for the Quadras on Instagram uh, at csjoseph. Or at cs.joseph. It's a... Uh, we released the four uh, symbols and icons for the four quadras on the, our Instagram. And I wonder if you guys had a chance to check that out. But if you notice for the uh, Delta Quadra, uh, it's the, the symbol for the Philosopher's Stone. And there's a reason why that's the case. And yes, I'm going to go pretty alchemical for the Delta Quadra in the, uh, uh, for its lecture, uh, for sure. Looks like Tanya has returned and I am giving her the ability to talk again. So um, go ahead, Tanya. Yeah. Hey, Chase, can you hear me? 
Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so I, I did have a, like a whole bunch of questions like while you were talking. Sure. Um, I guess I could start with one. If, um, in terms of, you mentioned shallowness. I mean, for me, my experience as an, I guess, an INTJ, I almost, but um, so when I was a lot younger, I always felt that being like a gold digger or being a woman that just wanted to take from my lover, you know, and not give anything back was just such a terrible thing, you know, and I could never see myself do that. And so that's probably a big reason why I've never really committed to anyone um, until I've actually uh, been in a relationship with a guy who I didn't see it like that transaction. It was more like we were both like golden pair. I believe he was an ENTP, but he thinks he's an INTP. Um, so I learned a lot from that um, relationship about myself and self-development. But I think also um, I completely understand when you say um, when you say stuff about shallowness, because after this whole relationship ended, um, I kind of went back to that sort of, well, you know, trying to be shallow in a way, like just uh, wanting to be with guys just because they looked really hot. Um, and then having nothing to really kind of vibe off of other than just appearance. Um, but then I can sort of understand where, where that goes. And I think, could there be kind of like a, a transitioning between um, shallowness and being like, um, like being specific and, and having standards, you know? Oh, absolutely. I mean, everyone has to have personal standards. And by the way, I'm not saying all wayfarers are, are gold diggers. I'm saying all wayfarers have the potential to become gold diggers at their worst. That's what I'm saying. Um, and the out of all the 16 types, they have the highest risk of being a gold digger, basically. Uh, but uh, in terms of your other your other question, it really comes down to sharing. It really comes down to like, is, is it an equal change? Is it, or is there any form of imbalance there? What is there more to offer? Because if you're just leading with your achievements the entire time, it becomes imbalanced. Uh, it's like, uh, you know. Um, so what do you say achievements? I'm not quite sure what you're saying. I mean, like I, I don't go and say, well, hey, you know, I'm smarter than you and, and so forth and so on. Okay, I have a master's degree, blah, blah, blah. I don't really, actually I'm not that type of person, which is funny because I only use that kind of stuff when I need to. I kind of use it when I have to use it, when people are trying to like, sort of like put me down or for whatever reason. I just say, well, you know, I have this achievement, therefore I can achieve um, so forth and so on. But um, when you, when, when in terms of relationships, like I don't even, like a personal relationship, I don't even know how, how that would come across. Right. But are there situations where you've perceived that people are putting you down, but they're not actually putting you down? And then you led with an achievement in that conversation, but they weren't actually putting you down, but you misperceived that. And because you misperceived that, they left thinking that you were shallow. Um, Especially, you know, with someone who has Effie Trickster, right? Right. I mean, honestly, I just it's really hard for me to know what how people are in, the, in, in a way like maybe feel or what they think you see and so like because of that I almost feel like maybe I am an ESFP um because of the uh NE trickster in that um you mean e any demon yeah yeah um well, ESFPs have this approach of like, you know, hey, if you're going to take away my choice, then nobody gets a choice it, to the point where like the ESFP becomes insanely controlling because it's like, oh, you're restricting my freedom. Then no one gets any freedom until my freedom is unrestricted. That's, That's interesting. That's interesting because I, I kind of feel that same way um, as well. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm in that quadra. That yes. I could be of the four. Well, each each of the wayfarers actually have that point of view. It's just extremely sensitive to the ESFP, whereas wow. you know, performance anxiety is extremely sensitive to the INTJ because of the you know their performance per se. Because an ESFP, for example, like when they're in a relationship with somebody, they need attention bad and they need attention all the time. And sometimes they feel bad about asking for attention. And then because, because from their point of view, it's like, well, if I'm not shiny enough or if I'm not getting enough attention, 
then 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 this person's not really going to be loyal or there this is a sign of them potentially going to abandon me and i don't know what to do this is not good and then they freak out inside and then sometimes they they clam up as a result of that because their isfj shadow causing them to clam up whereas from an intj point of view it's a little bit different the intj is more like okay hey i really like getting attention but I don't always need that attention because sometimes taking someone else's attention can actually get in the way of me having my own freedom of choice. It's the opposite or at least different. Hmm. Okay. Cause I know you mentioned NT is more like freedom or um, this quadra is more like freedom based. Um, yeah, they all I do. I do feel a lot more healthier. Way. Yeah. I do feel a lot more health like compared to um, I guess feeler feeler men or NFs enough men I almost feel like they put a lot of burden in on me when they want so much of me um can you hear me yeah I can hear you call me okay I'll just ignore that that's just um anyway but um so I it's just when I like I'm currently not seeing anyone necessarily but I do have this kind of like relationship with an NT and I think that he's um like he's like me I just feel like free and he feels free so it's like it's no kind of burden in that kind of way um right because it's like so. you're sharing you're, you're sharing the treasure uh, there's a movie recently um called the star is born uh oh. with bradley cooper lady gaga. Okay. yeah lady gaga yes and and this and this film you can kind of almost see it. it's like two wayfarers in a relationship with each other and one's feeling bad about the other one blowing up. And it's all about, you know, his status versus her status and how that really inhibits their relationship, et cetera. And instead of actually sharing the experience uh, with both, it ends up becoming an unshared experience because they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not sharing the treasure and enjoying the treasure together. It's all about, well, that's your treasure. Well, what about my treasure, et cetera. And it, it, it really creates or leaves a shallow relationship at least, you know, in, when, in the negative parts of that relationship within that film. So is that like two NTs or is that two NFs? Uh, that, would be, that would be within the Wayfair Quadra itself, SFP plus NTJ. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. I can, I can totally see that, yeah. Hmm. Which is one of the reasons why, you know, duality according to socionics is... is not accurate at all. It, it is completely inaccurate because in order for you to be with your dual, and it's funny, I actually had someone in the community actually reach out to me today about how recently Eric with talking with famous people finally admitted that duality, you know, well, it's only half right, you know, like, okay, whatever, you know, he's finally starting to see that it's not actually correct, especially given, you know, his own relationship as a result. It's because duality just really puts people in the situation because everyone's trying to get their own thing, you know, because like, for example, a crusader type, we want to have honor. Honor is what we want uh, to be honorable and, uh, uh, you know, to have people come to us for help and then also to uh, take up the cause of justice and fairness. We don't care about treasure. We will help our wayfarer basically that we're in a relationship with gain their treasure and find their treasure. But we also hope that they would share their treasure with us. And if they don't share their treasure with us, then we want to move on. That's, that's literally what causes the crusader type to not want to be loyal to a wayfarer type just right there. Like for example, um, even amongst friends, and I'm not talking about intimate relationships, but think of like, like from businesses and business partners uh, initially, you have an ENTJ who's handling a business uh, and uh, you know, he, he for some reason thinks, oh, I, I became CEO of this business by myself. I did it all on my own. And it's like, no, you had some NTPs and SFJs do a lot of the hard work for you to get you to that point, but you don't even appreciate them. You're not showing any gratitude. And then all of a sudden you're taking all the glory, you're taking all of the, the everything, uh, you know, all the benefits for yourself when we're the ones who did most of the work. This is what caused Fouché and Talleyrand, especially Fouché to betray Napoleon, which caused Napoleon to lose Waterloo. Fouché was an NTP, Napoleon is an ENTJ. And because of that, Fouché did not give Napoleon the benefits of his intelligence network during those battles and that caused, uh, ultimately caused Napoleon to lose in Waterloo. 
because Fouché turned on him by deciding not to give any help or support to Napoleon because Napoleon was basically being a glory whore, you know, taking all the treasure and all the glory for himself. It's not sharing, right? So that's interesting because, um, you know, it's just for me as an INTJ, I guess, I don't, um, I don't understand when people don't understand how, I guess, why, you know, like, when you achieve something, it's like, uh, it's kind of, for me, it's obvious. You didn't really achieve it yourself. There's people around you that helped uh, regardless. Um, so I just, maybe in terms of maturity, perhaps it has something to do with maturity. It absolutely does have to do with maturity. Every wayfarer type has to come to that conclusion at some point in time in their life. They're not going to do it by default. They're not going to do it right in the beginning right it's not um it's not something that's just going to occur to them right after they're born or right after they're able to talk because they have to come to that point of view at some point in time the more successful wayfarers out there are the ones who come to that point of view sooner than later but eventually every single one of them has to right has to recognize others and be grateful for the help and support that they've been given there's a reason why sfps are with SFJs because ESFJ with ISFP, FI hero with that FE hero support her and being very supportive, right? Or the ENTJ being with the INTP that has the supporter subconscious. It's all about support, but we've seen so many times throughout history and so many times with immature NTJs or at least NTJs who are mature, but then they can regress and they can go backwards, they can backslide in their life and fall in love with their own brand, fall in love with their own fame, fall in love with their treasure such that they forget who are the people that helped them reach there to begin with. And then those people abandon them and they wonder why they're alone. Right. I almost feel like maybe, and I always say feel, and that's probably the reason why maybe I think I might be an ESFP. <laughs> Um, I mean, INTJs do it all the time. They have FI child. I can see that. Yeah. Um, so I think if, um, okay, what was I going to say? <laughs> I just like lost my train of thought. Um, so if uh, perhaps a, a, like a mature INTJ in terms of them wanting to, um, you know, get to their super ego, if that makes any sense. With that, uh, with the trickster, I think it's it. I think if you um, master the trickster function, you get to your super ego. Is that what, uh, from my understanding? Uh, your demon function. Uh, if you're able to go through your demon gateway uh, in an orderly manner instead of a chaotic manner, you can turn it, begin the process of turning it into an angelic function which will give you the ability to unlock your trickster function and turn that into a master function. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I thought that's what it, um, which okay. means, which means the INTJ in their angelic form literally becomes the avatar of the person who shares the most. And it's so crazy. Cause I actually want to say that I've, I was that way once I discovered kind of um freedom to 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 make and create um and i am an artist and i'm also another part of me i have a career but i don't see that as me but it is me but i just maybe i'll keep that aside anyway um when i uh when i made a lot of art and when i just really enjoyed the process and it made me it made me kind of transition to a type of person that wants to like that would want to give to others and help others and just because of what I've experienced um, being an artist and and spending so much time um, making stuff you know it, it did I feel like maybe i I did tap tap my super ego in, in some sort of way right and um that being said um would that be kind of like, could I be, be at my super ego for a long time? Or how does that go? Like how, how it's, long it's, can you be in your, 
it, it's more of becoming balanced over time. It's not like just some logical switch. If your soul is like a farm, right, with four different crops, and you just prefer to uh, focus most of your energy on one crop because it makes you the most money and you kind of ignore the other crops over time, that's someone who's very ego focused and very egotistical. It's just the thing is, is that the furthest away crop, the crop that requires you to move the equipment around and water and take care of the most, the one that takes the most effort is your superego. But the superego itself, you realize that that crop actually has the ability to produce, produce the highest yield and the most, the most return on investment. This is why some people move from their ego crop directly to their superego crop and do the expedient, but they lack the experience and the tools to be able to take care of that crop because they have ignored the other two that are much closer and easier for them to do. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So, um, now another question I wanted to ask about, um, um, leading with like the NI, I mean, I can intuitively understand that. It's like the element of fire and how that's, um, that's a very kind of like, uh, kind of like a, it's emotional. It's just like water, I guess, like NE is water, right? Um, so NI right. would be like fire. So um, I almost, I almost feel like as an INTJ, that's my if that's my typo um typography or whatever um could like i feel like my personality may may come across as too strong for most like my energy is just like is it maybe because of my achievements because like once you know i uh went back to school and did all these like things and stuff i almost have this energy it's just like achieved like achievement driven it was just it's just like this energy of like does like so much kind of like passion and desire to achieve something that wherever I go, I have that sort of thing around me. Right. And that's, and I think and that's people very healthy. Off, I think people get off put by that sometimes. They do because it could be because of their own insecurities. Uh, okay. You know, uh, so I'm going to go devil's advocate mode here from the NTJ point of view. It's like not, it's not the, it's not the wayfarer's fault that other people can't achieve as much as they can. It's not the wayfarer's fault that they can't get as much treasure that the, as much as the wayfarer can, they can't find treasure like the wayfarer can. They can't earn treasure like the wayfarer can. The issue is, is that, the wayfarers are either refusing to acknowledge who helped them receive the treasure or the wayfarers are not willing to share the treasure with the people that help them actually get it along the way. That's the only issue. Uh, mm. And sometimes the wayfarer likes to flash their treasure or flaunt their treasure to other people. And that's very intimidating and ultimately alienating. Okay. I know what you mean by that. Um, I don't know. It's just, I have this conflict in my mind where, um, I am so sometimes wayfarers are not different. even aware that they do it though, especially when you look at Effie demon and Effie trickster of the NTJs, the NTJs are not so aware that they do it. Whereas the SFPs are, and it's one of the advantages that the SFPs have over the NTJs. However, NTJs are kind of more aware of the consequences of their own actions compared to SFPs. They lack that awareness. So it's kind of in balance. Mm, okay. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Bottom line is to be, the, to be a great wayfarer, show gratitude to the people that helped you achieve. That's the bottom line. If you do oh, that, um, you're, you, you will be successful. Now here's a thing that I noticed about um myself. I um I try and trust people. Like I try giving people the benefit of the doubt, you know, wherever I go and um trying to be open with people in that kind of way and and sometimes they're closed off and I can sense it and I can like intuitively know it. Um and it's just it doesn't bother me, but it just it kind of feels bad for me. Like I feel kind of like, well, fuck am I like a good person like what's going on here um but then I have to like go back and can, like think well maybe it's just their that's their issue you know um which it can and be and so I sometimes like I sometimes have to remember or maybe um 
I sometimes have to kind of um, help myself and, and say, well, you know, I need to take care of my needs and um, I need to like not be so open in that way, you know, um, with people because maybe they, they don't want to understand me. Maybe they don't want to get to know me, you know? And I mean, I inherently know and I inherently like, you know, just spiritually speaking that people are good people, you know? Um, and I don't know how other INTJs are in terms of, you know, being like, I guess, untrustworthy or is it more, I mean, I don't really know how, I feel like I'm a lot more softer as an INTJ perhaps because maybe, um, you know, I can understand people or the any is kind of, um, developed maybe. Um, so I just, I want to be able to, with that question, I kind of want to know like, um, how do I not uh, beat myself up or how do I not um, trust people, trust people, like how do I know not to trust people that aren't good in, in that kind of way? So there's a great question. The answer to that question is the parable of the talents. In the parable of the talents, the master trusts his servants with money basically. And, um, so uh, you, give, you give somebody some money, you lend some, them some money, you lend them some of your treasure, and you see what they do with it. Can you trust them with your treasure? Don't throw pearls before swine, right? So you just don't want to like give a whole bunch to somebody and see what they do with it. You give them a little and see what they do and how they grow with it and how they maintain it and if they respect it. Share some of your treasure, share some of your status, share some of your fame, and see what they do with it. If it corrupts them, if they if they don't uh, if you don't get more uh, out of it than what you put into it, then there's a there's a problem there. Now, granted, that doesn't give you the right to have a covert contract where you expect to receive or you're giving with strings attached. That's not what that means. Think of it as a test. It's kind of the SFP NTJ loyalty check, where you're trusting someone else with a small amount of your treasure just to see what it is. Because if they if you could trust them with a little bit and they do well with it you give them some more and then eventually you can give them all of you, right? You can give all of yourself to this person and all of your treasure to this person because you can absolutely mm -hmm. trust them because it is written, um, uh, the one who has more will be given to and the one who has not, even that will be taken away from him. It's that entire okay. process. Right. And, then, and yeah, that makes sense. I almost feel like the more you give, the more you get back. In some um, cases. Yeah. And ultimately it should be because remember your relationships, be it intimate business, parenting, whatever, it doesn't matter. Any kind of human interaction should go like this. If you get less out of it than what you put into it, it's cursed. If you get more from it than what you've put into it, it's a blessing. The thing is though, is that especially in an intimate relationship, both partners are putting in uh, to the relationship, but they're both receiving more than they're putting in because it's an energy. It's an energizing engine cycle. You know, it's like mm, a yin and yang it. equilibrium that's able to produce more for both. Wow. Wow. That's, that's how it's supposed that's to be. Really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. I know I had a question when you said something before, what you said before, the last thing you said, and then it just kind of like disappeared. Um, it's all good. But yeah. Um, hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, we got another question. Um, uh, <laughs> Dominic said, my wife broke open my treasure chest, LOL. <laughs> Um, John Doe says, can you, could you say all, could you say warfares, uh, utilize the laws of power the most? No, I think everyone utilizes all of the laws of power. I just think some, uh, laws of power apply to certain types more than others, uh, basically. And law five especially applies to wayfarers for sure. Whereas like the final law of power, the 48th law, which is assume formlessness, the law of formlessness, that applies the most to um, crusader types or NTPs specifically. So, um, so it's just, it's kind of different and subjective in that way. All right, awesome. Um, does anyone else have any questions? One more question, Chase. Yes, sir. 
Okay, this goes out to my ESFP best friend. Uh, it's not that great of a question, but do you, do you ever notice or have you noticed that ESFPs, do they demand you remember everything that you say? Because my ESFP friend, I don't know if it's his SE hero just demanding so much SI from me, but he wants me, even as a starter type, he speaks a million miles a minute about everything and expects me to remember all of it. Is that, is that common for ESFPs? Yes, it is. Because from their point of view, if you're not paying attention to them, then, uh, then they're not important to you. And uh, pr concrete proof to them that, that you are paying attention to them is if you remember things that they tell you. See, I can remember maybe like 80% of what he's saying, but it's also like, I want to speak as well. So all, all you have to do, Lev, is just go up to him and be like, yo, listen, you speak really fast and I am paying attention to you. And I know that, you know, you be paying attention to you makes you feel important and that's fine. I, I'm happy to make you feel important, but you can't feel less important just because I'm not able to remember every little thing. Sometimes I may ask you to repeat yourself or sometimes I'm not going to be able to remember every single thing. That's it. Okay. That's all you got to do. Okay. Very cool. Thank you. No problem. All right, is this another question I see here? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, thank you, John Doe, for your uh, interesting comment about Hillary Clinton. Uh, all right, cool. Um, I think that's it for me, folks. I got to get ready uh, to leave here. Uh, Railgun and I are going on a date, and uh, we're going to be having fun, and she's very excited. <laughs> so... Um, but uh, thank you all for attending this month's live lecture. We'll see you guys next month for the next lecture. We're doing the Delta Quadra for the next one. It'll be uh, very excellent. And uh, we're doing some more Eight Rules for Love. I know it's Christmas time. I've been really sick, and I was hoping to have more content out. I am going to be getting uh, some uh, Patreon lectures out very soon uh, this weekend. And uh, going to be doing another Eight Rules for Love here as well. Uh, so thank you all for your patience. and. Uh, We'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you all next time. So with that being said, you all have a good night. Uh, later.